my life, I've seen New York City under full quarantine. The Midwest overrun, devastated by pests. It's California. And then what happened next was something none of us saw coming. It became a race against time to save our future, to even have a future. It's the year 2100, and I survived. To change the future, first you have to imagine it. Earth 2100 starts now. The idea that within this century, perhaps in your lifetime, our civilization could lie in ruins seems unbelievable. But according to some of the world's leading minds, that's not just a worst case scenario. It's a real possibility. Good evening, I'm Bob Woodruff. Over the next two hours, we'll take you on a journey into a world that could await us and our children. 370,000 babies will be born today. And we've taken the liberty of creating one more a fictional character we're calling Lucy, who will be our guide through this century. Her life story is not a prediction about what will happen, but what might happen. This once glorious city whose lights at night could be seen for miles, empty now. Its towering skyscrapers, once a testament to our ingenuity, now stand as crumbling monuments to our demise. Maybe only artists can grasp what that kind of future really holds for us. It's perhaps in the area that we think of today as science fiction, but that could be a very real future for the planet. A hundred years from now, if New York is abandoned, um, I can imagine some advanced creatures, maybe humans, maybe extraterrestrials, looking at New York and saying, those ignorant people, how on earth could they have ever expected to survive? I can ask myself what happened, but where do I begin? With the droughts, the famines, the plague? It began long before all that. I lived through it all. My story is everyone's story. The story of the last century. I was born June 2nd, 2009. Civilization was at a crossroads. We were in a race for our future. Today, I say to you that the challenges we face are real. They are serious and they are many. The temperature is expected to keep going up. The stock market plunged. Douglas County will run out of drinking water. They will not be met easily or in a short span of time. Sixth grader came down with suspected swine flu on Wednesday. Energy, climate, food, population, economic pressures, any one of these challenges might be very serious in itself. But because they're happening all simultaneously, it's going to be very difficult for our governments to cope. When I look at the next century, I feel it's up for grabs. Raising sea Catastrophic weather. 10-year drought. It's scary. These are things that are happening today. The time for action is now. The world had never known such uncertainty. We were used to having what we wanted and doing what we wanted. The analogy that I would draw is someone looking at their bank account and week after week they're withdrawing money and they're enjoying a good life. If they would bother to read the statements, they would see that the bank account is dropping 900, 800, 700, 600 dollars. And at that rate, you know that another six months of the good life there's not going to be a good life anymore we've acted as though we were independent of the environment we burned fossil fuels we've overused our renewable resources in the belief that we could do that forever people are complaining about the economic crisis we have right now you haven't seen nothing yet you know if we continue down the suicidal pathway that we're on uh, where we basically turn living stuff into dead stuff and call that economic growth, this will look like the good old days. Although the world I was born into was running out of so much, water, oil, land, I remember a loving family 
A big house, green lawn, more water than we knew what to do with. My parents must have known what was happening. We had a compact car and recycled. And it wasn't just us. Smart, imaginative people everywhere were working furiously on solutions. Our government was pouring money into alternative energy. It seemed like everyone was growing their own vegetable garden. Windmills were sprouting up all over. People were beginning to understand. But the clock was running out, and nature was always one step ahead. Flowers are blooming earlier, and trees are leafing earlier. Birds are coming back from migration much earlier. If you were to pull back from the Earth, what you would see is sort of a refugee movement, if you will. And species are moving their ranges farther north to get to cool, from south to north, and from the valleys up to the mountaintops. Of course, as a child, I didn't notice these things, having nothing to compare it to. I was a little girl enchanted by my small world, until one summer, thousands, maybe millions of dragonflies showed up out of nowhere. They were delicate and beautiful, and I put one in a jar. My mother was puzzled and looked them up. They were supposed to be in Cuba, not Miami. It was not until much later that I realized they were a sign of what was to come. It's 2015, six short years from now, and the best laid plans are getting underway. A wave farm off Scotland is harnessing the ocean's energy. Vatican City has gone totally solar. And here in America, cars are running cleaner and more efficiently. Still, we cling to that old habit, oil. It's getting harder and more expensive to find. From coast to coast, motorists are searching for relief from soaring gas prices in California. Lines we could see a doubling or tripling of real oil prices. That's after inflation. We're running out of oil, and we've created a society, the American way of life is what we call it, based on the assumption that oil will be plentiful forever. The large spread out suburbs that we've grown accustomed to, the strip malls, the big box stores with their enormous parking lots around them, all of those have been made possible because we've had cheap gasoline and as energy becomes much more expensive, you'll see that those areas become less desirable places to live. The first time I moved, I was six. A lot of people were leaving the suburbs for the city. There were new jobs and you didn't need a car for everything. My dad was going to work on the new streetcar system in Miami. And my mother told me we were going to live on the top floor of an apartment building. She said we'd see the palm trees below us. I was excited but also a little sad to leave. As the price of oil goes up, it will ripple through every part of the global economy. In Washington today, protesters demanded an end to rising food prices. Our agriculture system is almost wholly dependent on cheap oil. Tremendous amounts of diesel fuel that are used in planting and harvesting and then moving this stuff all these vast distances. By 2015 in the United States, add about 20 million people to the population and then just play out what that does to consumption patterns. I mean, the, the number of people that we've got to feed. There's just basically this slow creeping tension for natural resources. As the American way of life becomes increasingly unsustainable, the rest of the world will be trying to catch up. The Chinese like cars, and they like big cars. You have 14,000 cars added to China's roads daily. Incomes are rising really rapidly. They're moving into meat-based diets. You need 